I'm an Aqua Dramina. I'm a fact checker at the New Yorker. My name is Murat Ostashkin. I'm a copy editor at the New Yorker. The World Cup is this amazing festive event that happens every four years. And usually in every World Cup, there is something uh, innovative, something new. This World Cup, the big innovation is that they're going to use VAR, which are video system referees. So how this works is it happens in a control room in Moscow. There's the video assistant referee, three assistant video assistant referees, yeah. four monitor operators okay. who are making sure that the video assistant referees are seeing all the right angles and yeah. the correct speeds. And then behind them, there's a FIFA official who I think stands at a podium or something and basically officiates the officials that are helping the officials on the ground. Wait, hold on. So Officiate he game. officiates the officials who are officiating the game? Yeah. Okay, that's, that sounds a lot of pressure. I know. Yeah. So a lot of the unfair calls or games where we feel cheated, um, we feel like there could be a sense of justice brought into the game. In this particular game, when the Brazilian players lined up to hear the national anthem, it was the hymn to the flag of Brazil that was played rather than the national anthem. <laughs> and so the players didn't know what was going on. Spain's Antonio Maceda would score a goal that was wrongly disallowed for not crossing the line. And then Brazil's great player, uh, Socrates, will end up scoring off of what seemed to be an offside. To make it even more interesting, Socrates, the Brazilian player, would after the game talk about how the Spanish goal was a very legitimate goal and that World Cup officials end up kind of, as I was saying, not cheating but kind of helping the bigger teams against yeah. the smaller one. But it's kind of this this moment um, where the, uh, an opposing player is turning the camera, so to speak, onto the, the officials and saying, you need to do better with the calls that you're making um, in such important games. Fouls kind of work on a, like a gradient. There are some less severe, there's some more severe, and a lot of considerations go into that. A ball comes over the top on the French attack. Their um, forward, Batistone, is trying to get his foot on the ball. And he does, but the volley goes wide. And the German keeper, Schumacher, who's coming out, makes no play on the ball and no. just crushes Batistone. Not at all. Batistone hits the ground, loses consciousness, loses two teeth, and he's just laying there. And the referee awards a goal kick. Well, you can tell from the goal's, the goalie's angle where he's running that he's not going for the ball at all. Yeah. You got to see how he lowers his shoulder. These calls are so hard because referees have to protect the goalies yeah. too from kind of clashing one on one with players. That's true. And so this is another one where VAR would be very very helpful because they can upstairs from upstairs look at this from so many different angles yeah. and then say, you know, this is, this is a call, this is a foul, this, this direct goalie should be given a red card. Another thing that's interesting about fouls in real time versus in slow motion is that some fouls look way worse in slow motion than they really are and some of them look much less severe than they actually are in yeah. slow motion. In my mind, this foul on Batistone looks not as bad in slow motion. So really, I think the benefit of VAR would be to see it in real time, just from a different angle. Yeah. You know? That looked bad, though, man. It still looks really <laughs> bad in slow motion. Now, this is the most famous non-call of all time. Maradona's most famous goal. And it comes with his hand. The hand of God. The hand of God. When he's running to celebrate, you can kind of see him like look over a little he bit. He looks back. You know, to like yeah. kind of see um, if the referee had caught on to what he did. Like he, did, he gives these kind of furtive glances and then... Like right there. And, right. He knows what he's done. 
Why this goal is so important though is that had VR existed, he would have gotten a red card for, for using his hand like this. Right. And he wouldn't be able to score the next goal in this of, of this game, which, which is, is the considered actual deciding goal. Which is which is considered the one of the greatest goals ever scored. If you Google right. goal of the century, this is what pops up. Um, and so it's it's this goal where um, he essentially gets the ball midway and he is able to escape half of the English team, fake out the goalie, and finally score to, to kill off the game, essentially. Right. So Diego Maradona, who in the last video we saw celebrating his hand of God, is now crying because they're down to nine yeah. in the, the finals of the World Cup. Jurgen Klinsmann, who <laughs> famously so would go on to become United States men's national team head coach, in this game, he has a spectacular dive. I mean, just flamboyant dive. Yeah. <laughs> Ponzon goes, starts up, but oh, he, looks he, like makes a fish. No, he makes no contact with Klinsman at all. And then when once Klinsman has fallen, he kind of has this, you know, back flail thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he does. <laughs> I don't see why you would be kind of flinging your leg up like that. Yeah. So it's, it's a very, very, very theatrical performance, like, you know, Maybe he shouldn't have been coach of the team. He should have been on Broadway. And of course, because of, as a result of this, Argentina get a red card and their man down. The frustration, which starts here, blows over and the referee gives another Argentine player a red card. And so they're down by nine, nine men. to nine men. This was the first time in history where there had been a red card handed out uh, in the final, oh, yeah. and it turns out to be two red cards yeah, <laughs> in, yeah. in, in relatively quick uh, succession. Germany will go on uh, to get a, another penalty, which will end up being the winning goal. Soccer's been around for so long, yeah. and even the technology to implement VAR has been around for a while now. Yeah. Why now, do you think? Why would this World Cup? bring yeah. it into the international stage. The technology has existed, but there's been a lot of hesitance and a lot of pushback yeah. um, against using it for you know a number of reasons we can go into. The soccer purists are always gonna push back on any new exactly. or innovative thing. They push back on the new game. innovative cleats. And a lot of people yeah. feel like this is a game that is based so much on momentum. Anything that's gonna break the momentum when the referee is stopping to either listen to what the assistant referees are saying or is going over to the side to look, it kind of slows down the game. Yeah, I think they've also seen how it's worked in other sports. Yes. I mean, I think of the rule the last few years in the NBA where you can review pretty much anything in the last two minutes of the game or how tennis has had its Hawkeye system for the mm. last more than 10 years now. Especially in tennis, people thought that was really going to change the rhythm of the match. Okay. Because a match does have such a rigid rhythm. I mean, yeah. it's one point and then the next and the next. But it really didn't. 